Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well, we've got a fun one for you today. We've been playing around with interactions and filters with the Divi 5 theme. I've got some sections here. If I click on this section, it's going to roll down to the section below. If I click on this section, it's going to roll down to the section below here. If I click on this section, it's actually going to roll back up to the top. And I've created some buttons here that will do the same thing. Section 1 is where we're at at the moment. Section 2, funnily enough. Section 3. And back to the top. Really easy to do. Now, normally we do this with anchor tags with Divi 4. With Divi 5 and the new interactions, we don't need to put any anchor tags in at all. And I've quickly made some custom fixed position buttons. And I've just got some full page sections here to demonstrate this. So let's get started. I've got this page open here. So let's go down and we'll delete everything. We'll start from scratch. I'm just going to go to wireframe mode. Be a lot easier. I'll delete all these sections right here. Flip back to desktop. Okay, we've got like a new page going on here with a section in it. It's going to prompt us to put in a row. We'll just do the section first and then I'll show you how to add those fixed position buttons for anybody that, that wants to see that. I'm going to add a single column. In it, I'm going to use a heading module. I'm actually going to use for expediency the heading module I had just now. I've got it in my library. There it is. And it's just a heading module. I've got 150 pixel text, or it might be 200 pixel text. It's Anton. If I look in there, I can show you exactly what it is for anybody that needs to know that. I've got an H2. I've got it capitalized. Obviously, it's mine's white. I've got it 200 pixels tall. And I've just squashed the letter spacing a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the section just to make these sections a little more interesting. I'm going to give it a background. I'm going to add a background color to each of these. We'll start off with a red. And we'll throw in some of these crazy cards. I've got third tab along images. Let's start off with that one. I'm going to blend it with that color purely because so we can see these things stand out. I'll just change the color on them a little bit. If we roll down background image blend, I'm going to select multiply and it mixes it with that red color back there. OK, I want my titles to be full width of the screen, so I'm going to make the row full width. We can click on the green tab or we can go up to the top here and just click on where it says row up there. To make it full width, I'm going to go to design sizing. Type in 100 where it says width there. Down below in the max width, I'm going to type in 100 and the percentage sign. Otherwise, it'll try and put in pixels, which won't work. Great. Well, that's fantastic. But I'd like to make this full screen sections like we had before. So to do that, go into the section, the blue tab. Once we're in there, design, sizing, width. I'm going to do minimum height because we may want to go a little taller on small devices. I'm going to put in 100 VH for viewable height. Great, we've got a full page section there. Well, I want the writing to be dead center. So still in design, we can roll up. We're in our section. I'm going to go to layout. It's got flex by default there. Fantastic. What I'm going to do is go down to justify content. I'm going to put it in the middle. At the moment, it's set to start. Fantastic. OK. Well, let's just duplicate this a couple of times so we've got three sections. I like to do a lot of this stuff on wireframe view. Just go up to the section, two little squares, and we'll do it one more. Three sections will do us fine. I'm just going to enable this so we can see everything on the front view too. Fantastic. I'm going to go into section number two now. Now, here's a little tip. When we use interactions, it gives you a tree of everything on the page. So anything you want to scroll to in our case or link to or however you want to do it, we want to give an admin label so we can find it easier. And this will become apparent when I do it in a minute. So go to your section. This is section two. I'm going to just call it S2. And you will understand what I'm talking about in a moment. And while we're in here, let's change that background color. I'll leave the same image on each of these. Let's perhaps have a green on this one. And the one below, 
Okay, I'm just going to click anywhere on it. I'm going to give this an admin, admin label, funny enough, of S3. You can call yours what you want as long as you can identify them. Now, the top one, we haven't given an admin label to. Funnily enough, we're going to call this S1. Admin S1. Great. So what I want to happen is what you saw before. I know I had a horror effect on this before, but it was a bit overkill. I'll show you how to do that when we build, build the buttons in a minute. This one, I want to scroll down to section two here. So we want to make sure we're on section one. Go over to advanced. This is where you'll find the interactions tab. Add an interaction. Well, when we click on this section, I want it to scroll to and the target module, if I click on that, this is where I was telling you about it gives you a tree with a top section that we call S1. That's why we gave it that handle because it's easier to find. Otherwise, you're looking, well, that's first section, blah, 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 second section. And it's the same for any of these other things you may want to link to or use an interaction on. So with this one, we want to link to section two. Let's save that. Let's go down to section two. Funnily enough, we want this to link to section three. Advanced, interactions, we'll add one. On click, what do we want to do? We want to scroll to the element. Target module for this particular one is going to be S3. My mouse is actually on it there, that's convenient. And we get when we get down to number three, I guess I'll change that background color so it's not the same as the top one. But when we get down to number three, I want to click on this one and take it back to the top, which was S1. Advanced, interactions, on click, or it's a scroll, where to? S1 at the top. Fantastic. Let's just change that background. That'll be over in content. Background's always under content here. Let's give it a blue or something. Okay, when we're happy, save draft. Just kill the preview I've got there. We'll do a fresh one, fresh preview. Here's our top section. As you can see, when I click on it, it's going to go to our next section. When I click on that, it'll go to the blue section. When I click on this, it should go back to the top. Bingo. Perfect. Now, for the little buttons that you saw initially doing exactly the same thing, I'm sure many of you have figured out how to do this. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to build these buttons with text modules and the reason I'm doing that instead of using actual buttons I tried it by using the button module itself but the trouble is when you click on that you get a white flash as it tries to reload the page so I've got a great little workaround for anybody that doesn't know what I'm going to do it's very very simple I'm going to add a new row to this section it doesn't really matter where we put this because I'm going to use fixed positioning but I do want to be down the bottom because if we're on the top it could affect what they call the z index so again i'm going to go to wireframe view now i put those interactions on every time i click on one of those it takes me somewhere there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a new row in our last section here like i say it doesn't matter too much where you put it because we're using fixed positioning um i want four columns in mine i'm going to use a simple text module and funnily enough it's going to say section one now i've got that button in there let's go back to the front end go down to the bottom you should see it on the bottom there there it is right there section one i'll make it so you can see it so let's give that a little background i'm going to give it a dark background i think it lies in dark i'm going to take a little bit of the opacity away and it's going to show a hint of that image behind to make it stand out a little bit more i'm going to give it a crazy orange border go to design and text i'll use that crazy orange we've been using before i'll make it stand out over everything so over in design text i want mine to be uppercase i'm going to use the regular font color i'm going to paste in my crazy orange right there text size is fine i do want it to be centered though now I'm actually going to shrink that button down a little bit in size by going into sizing here. I'm going to give mine a fixed width of, well, 150 is all I need there, I'd say. So where it says width up here, I'm going to type in 150 and then either PX on the end or just select pixels from here. 
Let's shrink that down a little bit. I want to make sure it's aligned in the middle of our column. Perfect. And just to make sure it's going to stay there over everything, I'm going to do exactly the same with the border. I'm going to go in there and give that border the same crazy color. And you won't see anything because I'm not giving it a width yet. I just want one pixel. Perfect. And let's round off those corners a little bit up here. Change is going to be checked by default, so it'll do all four at once. Let's say 10 pixels. Great. Well, now we've got the first one. I'm going to add an interaction over in advanced interactions. You know what to do. This one wants to always get us back to the top section. So I'll click. I want to scroll to. Where to? S1, top section. And just so they know it's an interactive button, let's make sure we save this. When they hover over it, I want it to change color because unlike a regular button, you're not going to have that mouse icon unless we put in a little code, cursor colon pointer. But if you don't want to put in code, making it change color is a great way to tell people something's going to happen. What I'm going to do is go in to my design again. I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to go down to my filters. Initially, I want it to be that color, but when they hover over it, I want to change the hue. So I'm going to go up here, little desktop type icon, and I'll click on it and go down to hover. We can change any of our settings now for when it, we hover over it. When they hover over it, I want it to go through the spectrum like it is now and end up with a sort of bright pink or a purple or something like that just before it gets back to orange. Perfect. Now we can switch back again to the desktop view, back to our regular color. Time it takes to go from one to the other, we can change that over in advance down to transitions, default 300 milliseconds, just under a third of a second. And I'm gonna make mine maybe 750, three quarters of a second, great. Now that we've got our first button, let's just flip back to wireframe. I'm gonna duplicate it up again. Got four of them there, doesn't matter which one you drag across, they're all absolutely identical. It is so quick working with Divi 5 on the back end here. I'm very impressed with it. Great, now we've got those in place. Scroll down to where we were. There's our buttons. Button number two, or text module number two. Funny enough, it wants to say number two. And the interaction that we've got, we need to change the target, the S2. Next button, funnily enough, section three. Over to advanced interactions, target needs to be, funnily enough, section three or s3 there we go and this next one is going to do exactly the same as section one i'm just going to say back to the top so if we go into this one now let's say to the top advanced interactions we want this one to go back up to s1 fantastic it's on there already now i just want to check our first one here because i noticed the second interaction said text it may do that automatically this one should say s1 no it doesn't good great well now i want these to be sticky at the top here so i'm going to click on the row that they're sitting in the green tab right here of course it's taking us to the top but i am in the row i'm going to go to advanced i'm going to go down to position i'm going to change it from relative to fixed I want it to be top middle and it's actually up here behind my header to get it down i need to do a bit of vertical offset now initially i think i gave it sort of 80 and that's pixels it's not quite enough i'm gonna give it 150. i did notice before it doesn't quite reflect this padding on the front end like it does here we'll see what we've got going on let's save draft and preview. That's actually all right. It's sitting just below our header there. Okay, we know we've got our sections. This is going to go to two. This one's going to go to three. This one's going to go back to the top. Section two takes us to section two, back to the top. Section three takes us to section three. Fantastic. And section one takes us back to the top also. Fantastic. Now, for anybody that actually wants to make that a mouse cursor when they put their mouse over it, we can add a single line of code. I'll show you exactly how to do that. If we go back into any one of these text modules, 
go over to the advanced custom CSS and we use module elements here in the main element. I'm going to type two words, cursor, colon, pointer, semicolon. Great. Now, once I've got it in here, let's right click on the main element, extend main element attributes, this row, just the text modules. That's all that's in this row, actually. That's fine. Let's extend. And we should have that in all of our buttons in there. If I go into this one here, advanced custom CSS module elements. There it is. Perfect. Let's resave. And we'll re preview. Now, when we hover over, we've got a color change and the little hand icon. So there you go, guys. There's how to use your interactions to click on things and use them as anchor tags. Really easy to do. Really nice little feature with Divi 5. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget, we're going to be doing more and more with Divi 5. If you have something with Divi 4 that you're having a problem with, you want me to take a look at, put it down below the video. I'll do my best to explain it. We'll make a little demo video just like this one. So once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.